the games work well on consoles too. A bit of an odd one here, there's a lot of speculation attached to the intro. Storm Riders was an action game being developed for the Xbox very late in the console's lifespan and was based on a Korean comic book and film of the same name. It's all a bit of a mystery beyond that. The very primitive prototype was found on an Xbox dev kit and subsequently shared online by Assembler Games. There are rumours that it borrowed heavily from Ninja Gaiden in both its gameplay and assets, leading many to assume that Tecmo was somehow involved. A game called Storm Riders Online, an MMO, was developed by Phoenix Games Studio, and seemingly the Xbox version of Storm Riders was found in a folder labelled Phoenix, so perhaps this was an early version of that, who knows. Whatever its origin, it has 360 degree epileptic fits. Nice. Project Velocity, also known as Octane, was a racing game being developed by Visual Science for the Xbox and possibly the PS2, which was intended to be published in 2005 by Sierra. The prototype was found on an old Xbox debug kit in 2007, leading to speculation that Project Velocity was an early prototype in the Need for Speed Underground series, although the prototype was dated early 2006, after the release of Need for Speed Underground 2. This prototype was passed to P2P Online, and the footage of the gameplay shows that it's clearly a very early build with a terribly poor frame rate. Visual Science shut down in late 2006, so Project Velocity died with it. It does play very similarly to the Need for Speed series, but nobody's sure where, if anywhere, it would have fit within the series. Apollo was a first-person shooter in development for the Xbox from Zootfly in 2003. It was due for a 2005 release, so they had aspirations to release it on the Xbox 360 as well. The footage is murky as hell, but the gameplay looks pretty damn good to be fair. Set in a fictional state during a totalitarian regime, the story saw you play as a journalist who's framed for the murder of his fiancée. Zootfly boasted four distinct environments, cutscene montages after each level showing the player's best actions, kind of a highlight reel, and a branching story that based its pathing on the player's choices throughout the game, which they refer to as a psychometric system. I'm not sure why Hollow was cancelled, but I'm pretty sure that they never found a publisher. Space Quest was being developed by Escape Factory for the Xbox and PS2 to be published by Sierra. A spin-off of sorts from the Space Quest series of graphic adventures from Sierra, this would have been an action-adventure platformer. Announced in February 2002, this was in development for around 18 months until its cancellation in 2003. Sierra even went as far as hinting at the development of the seventh Space Quest game, and even made a website. The levels will be accessed by a number of hubs, with the hub acting as the main level with a primary mission, and the offshoot levels accessed via these hubs containing the secondary objectives. The graphics look decent enough, and interestingly, Space Quest was developed using the Unreal Engine, rather unusual for a platform game. Bizarrely, Sierra were adamant that this would be a Space Quest game in name only. The dev team were explicitly instructed not to even look at or play the original Space Quest games, so not only were they not to use the original assets or story, it shouldn't resemble a Space Quest game at all. This all seems a bit strange, and concrete details on the concept are hard to find. Ultimately, Sierra cut funding and scrapped the project, but the split between them and Escape Factory seems to have been a relatively pleasant one. Yeah. Eon of Tears was a fancy RPG being developed for the Xbox yeah. by Evolution. Well, I'm gonna do my press one. The main plot device was a difficult time. You did most likely take a nap afterward. Your quest will take you to the ends of time, quite literally, including the creation and Armageddon. Very old testament. You're gonna take a shot after we come back from the last one. During this journey, you would complete various quests in order to obtain powers and knowledge and learn the, quote, true meaning of the Bible. The graphics have a 3D style that reminds me of a little big adventure, and we can see that the game would have incorporated magic, swordplay, and several fantastical beasts. 
This would have had very adult themes and featured survival horror gameplay mechanics in addition to its RPG elements, which makes sense when you consider the source material. After all, the Bible does set up the adult horror genre. The Unholy was a first-person horror action-adventure game being developed in 2000 and 2001 for the Xbox by Otherworld Interactive. Initially announced for the PC back in 97, this then became an Xbox exclusive. The minute-long footage of the engine's tech demo is sadly all we have to go on, and it doesn't give much away. It's clearly a spiritual theme, as hinted at by the name, and the game, or at least this footage, is very dark. They never found a publisher for Unholy, so it was scrapped. AI The Circuit, also known as AI Gladiator, is an arena fighter being developed by Radical Entertainment for the Xbox. This was to be published by Warner Brothers as part of a 2001 licensing deal with Microsoft, which would have brought three games based on Steven Spielberg's AI film to the Xbox. Peter B. Online found a playable prototype on an Xbox dev kit in 2009, so we can see that it was built to a reasonable degree. Several fighters brawl it out in various small arenas, and there are up to four fighters which can be either player or computer controlled. The character select menu shows that at least nine characters would have been available. Looking at the gameplay, it actually seems to play more like a wrestling game than a traditional arena fighter. I have absolutely no idea how this all ties into Spielberg's film, AI, as I've never actually seen it. In the end, all three planned AI tie-ins were cancelled. Seraphim was a fancy third-person combat game being developed in 1999 by Valkyrie Studios. This was primarily being made for PC, but they were also planning an Xbox port. You take control of a Seraphim, a fallen angel, which have magical powers and inhuman strength. Set in a fantasy world filled with fantastic beasts and rival angels, you will be tasked with various missions to complete, including raiding settlements, assassinations, participating in huge battles with armies, and more. By completing these missions, you earn points, and points mean prizes. Very much like the levelling up system in an RPG, you use these to upgrade your character's gear and abilities, including better spells, weaponry, and physical attributes. The success or failure of these missions and the choices made would also affect the overall story arc of the game. Valkyrie Studios created a playable prototype in 2000, and it shows a lot of promise. There's a clear ancient Greek slash Roman influence in the environment. Your Seraphim can fight both on the ground and in air, and it looks like it could have potentially been a lot of fun. The game would have featured several multiplayer modes too, including some mission-based modes in addition to the usual suspects like deathmatch and capture the flag. An interesting concept here that was sadly cancelled when they couldn't secure a publisher. Dante was a third-person firefighting action-adventure game developed by Aces Studio in 2000 and 2001, before the release of the console. This was an early concept being created for the Xbox, as Microsoft had expressed a desire for its studios to create unique gameplay experiences for its new console. Presumably it was named Dante after Dante's Inferno, as in the game you play as a firefighter called Jeremiah Dante. The game would be presented in a sort of mockumentary format, as Dante is being followed by cameras for a TV show as he puts out fires using his fancy gear. This gear included a hose that would accommodate the to fight fires and a futuristic backpack that resembled a proton pack from Ghostbusters. Although admittedly it's a cool concept and certainly a unique one, I can see this being quite boring unless some other interesting mechanics are brought in. This footage is from a promotional concept video designed to demonstrate the idea. The prototype was greenlit by Microsoft, but it was cancelled before a playable prototype of Dante actually emerged. Fallen Kingdoms was an RPG being developed in 2004 and 2005 by Warthog, and was heading to both PC and Xbox for a 2006 release. Set in the fictional land of Aegean, which has been overrun by dark forces, you set out to free the land from evil. With 
third person gameplay saw you completing quests, engaging in real time combat, and of course levelling up your character. Fallen Kingdoms promised a rich 3D world, branching storylines and quests, numerous side quests, and a quote, morality system, which would alter how NPCs reacted to you based on your actions. And this would also affect the game's main storyline. There was a magical element to the combat too, and the environment could also be burnt or frozen using fire and ice spells. Although the footage is a bit rough, you can see that Fallen Kingdoms would have had some nice graphical aspects, like the lighting and elemental effects. Enemies would come in the form of undead creatures like skeletons and golems, led by the Wraith Thor, who would presumably be the game's main antagonist. This was eventually cancelled because Tiger bought Warthog to develop it exclusively for the kids Mondo before Tiger went bankrupt. The Core Gang is a fun looking platform game which I wasn't aware of until researching this video. If anyone has it or has played it, please let me know if it's any good because it looks great. This originally began as an Xbox game created by Swedish studio Zoink, which was founded by a former Shiny Entertainment employee. The Core Gang consists of three wacky characters, Pixie, Mad Boy and Rex, who use robotic suits created by a scientist called Core Suits. These enhance their abilities, helping them to take on the evil Crank Brothers, inhabitants of the Earth's core who, of course, intend to take over the world. The main gameplay mechanic is that you control any of the three characters at any time, switching between them to make use of their respective abilities to solve puzzles and complete tasks, very much like the Lost Vikings. In the end, the core gang had a 10 year development cycle, which saw the publishing rights change hands several times. When the concept was shifted to the Wii, the gameplay and the visuals were tweaked, and some new features were added. Obviously, this prototype Xbox footage isn't the best quality, but check out the Wii version if you're interested in seeing more. Interestingly, the Wii version has been very highly praised by critics, who've said it's one of the Wii's best platformers, comparing it to Banjo, Kazooie, Crash, Rayman, and even Mario Galaxy. This makes it all the more surprising that I've never come across it before. Objective Force Commander was a vehicular combat game being developed for the Xbox by Dynamic Animation Systems in 2002. Set not too far in the future, the game saw you take control of various off-road vehicles, all equipped with weaponry. As the name suggests, you would also be able to command vast numbers of vehicles by giving orders to the other AI controlled vehicles. The story follows a group of rebels taking on an evil energy company and would have contained missions as well as several planned multiplayer and co-op modes to play. Despite being shown in a playable form at 2002 E3, Objective Force disappeared quietly, perhaps due to the lack of a publisher. DC was an action-adventure game being developed for the Xbox by Intrepid Computer Entertainment formed by former Bullfrog employees working under the Lionhead Studios umbrella, which of course was itself established by Bullfrog's Peter Molyneux. In BC, you would take on the role of the chief of a prehistoric tribe, guiding your tribe to develop technologically, and eventually leading them to a peaceful valley to avoid the dangers. These dangers come in the form of various things, but one is, you guessed it, dinosaurs. Despite man and dinosaur never coexisting by many millions of years, in BC they're all roaming the earth together. It was also stated by Lionhead that the dinosaurs in the final game would be of an exaggerated scale, i.e. much larger than you would expect. There were also saber-toothed tigers, rival tribes, dodos, probably the most realistic aspect of all this, and vicious ape men, which were presumably some kind of Neanderthal type creature. Although you're acting as the tribe's chief, you would actually be able to physically control any member of the tribe. There are some interesting gameplay aspects in the mix here. You would be able to capture and train animals, and there was even a complex food chain. Early comments on the demo build praised the game's visuals, but most of all its AI, which among other things saw animals interacting with each other independent of the player's involvement, for example, hunting prey. BC was cancelled in late 2004, with Lionhead's Peter Molyneux stating that the project was worlds perhaps a mite too ambitious, but didn't rule out the development resuming at a later date. 
Intrepid were effectively closed, and some of the developments they moved over to Lionhead. City of the Dead, also known as George Romero's City of the Dead, was a horror first person shooter being developed for the Xbox, PS2, and PC. I believe it was being developed by Fuji Entertainment. I know of all the games on this list, this is one that people were most looking forward to. The story was based on Romero's Dead series of zombie films. Announced in late 2004 as shown in E3 in 2005, it had a planned 2006 release date. Publisher <coughs> <coughs> struck a deal to develop several games based on the Dead series, including this, and video game adaptations of Dawn of the Dead and Night of the Living Dead. Set on a fictional island, a zombie outbreak occurs after a military experiment which was testing on corpses goes horribly awry. It's unclear how much involvement Romero or anyone from his team would have had with City of the Dead, but Tom Savini, who's done makeup and special effects for numerous horror films, including the Dead series, would appear in the game as William McClane, a character that eventually becomes playable. Savini is a seasoned actor and stuntman too, appearing in many films over the you might remember him as Sex Machine in From Dusk Till Dawn. The footage shown at E3 wasn't playable, but was described by attendees as being quite shockingly graphic with blood and levels of violence. Sadly, City of the Dead was never released, and it's believed that this was due to Hook Interactive not having the necessary funds. True Fantasy Live Online was an MMORPG being developed for the Xbox by Level 5. Level 5 have a signature style when it comes to graphics, having made the Professor Layton and Nino Kuni games, and this is no exception. Although I'm not sold on the name True Fantasy, there's no arguing that the visual style is appealing. This was in development for a full two years before it was scrapped, and Microsoft even said that it was fully playable and almost finished by the time it was cancelled in 2004. True Fantasy would allow players to fully customise their character and then play in a huge online world containing up to 3,000 players. In typical MMO style, players could band together to go on adventures, complete quests and fight monsters. The trailer shows that there would have been a variety of environments, land and sea vehicles and even rival beasts. Unfortunately for Level 5, the two year development process was rife with complications. Level 5 themselves had no prior experience with an MMO, this brought about some issues, not the least of which being their struggle to implement voice chat into the game, which Microsoft were adamant should be included as it was a core feature of Xbox Live. It seems that Microsoft were quite demanding, and Level 5 was struggling to meet several of their demands, so relations grew rather strained as both parties became frustrated. In the end, Microsoft cancelled the game, and Level 5 has since claimed that Microsoft's inexperience with Japanese developers played a big part in this. According to them, when True Fantasy Live Online was cancelled, Microsoft and Level 5 were not exactly on good terms. Full Throttle Hell on Wheels is a cancelled Full Throttle sequel being developed by LucasArts for Xbox, PS2 and Windows. Just to clear up some possible confusion, there was another cancelled Full Throttle game called Full Throttle Payback, and there was also another cancelled game called Hell on Wheels, which I covered in my PS2 episode, but this is an entirely different game. Announced in 2002, this had a planned winter 2003 release date. An action-adventure game, this entry in the series would switch things up a bit and focus more on the action and fighting aspects of the gameplay rather than be a traditional adventure game like the original. A demo and trailer was shown at E3 in 2003, but the graphical style didn't go down too well, let's be honest it isn't great, and the fact that Tim Schafer wasn't involved with this one probably doomed it from the start. LucasArts probably thought the same, as Full Throttle Hell on Wheels was cancelled in late 2003. Racer X was a racing game being developed by Boss Game Studios for the Xbox sometime in 2002. <coughs> they were most known for their driving games for the Nintendo 64, having developed Top Gear Rally, World Driver Championship, and Stunt Racer 64 for the console. 
After the release of Star Racer 64 in 2000, they began work on Racer X. They wanted the game to be the best racing game to date. 